Okay, so this video is all about criteria C and some tips on how to structure it and how you can help improve your score for science. And um, primarily focusing on MYP5, so that's grade nine, grade 10 level. Um, so we're gonna start off with um, the criteria. So we have here, um, what data do you have? What does the data mean? Does your prediction fit your data? Um, what does the data tell you about your method and how could you improve your method? So essentially with each of these, the first one's talking about your table and um, how you're presenting your table and also presenting your graph. The next one is all about interpreting your graphs and also beginning to write your conclusion. Um, and the third one as well, again, about your prediction um, of that is referring back to your, uh, your research question in your conclusion, making sure that you've mentioned it and linked back to that initial part in your B. Um, the next one then about how does it tell you about your method, this is your evaluation where you're going to ex um, evaluate your um, methodology and anything that potentially could have gone wrong or could have gone better. Um, and the last one would be potential solutions, okay, so improvements. Um, so we're going to go through each different section, broken up into how I would recommend you structure this. Um, so we're going to start off the first thing with tables. Now, you might have one table of results. You actually could have a few different tables of results, especially depending if you start to consider uncertainties on this. So the first thing is when you do your table, you want to always have your independent variable and then your dependent variable going afterwards. Now, in this case, I'm just using the example of time against temperature. Now, for this, you want to have headings and you want to have units. So if you look at this on here, you can see I've got time. Time is given by the symbol T, but it's measured in seconds. I've put that little line there to show that it's measured in seconds. I've also said that it's got an uncertainty of about human error of like 0.03 seconds. Okay, it could be a little bit more um, generous with that. It could have been what my, my stopwatch measured to. Um, so again, using this one for that. Um, temperature again is given by a big T and I've put a little dash in here so it's measured in degrees Celsius and again plus or minus on my thermometer I could read it to about 0 0.5 degrees Celsius and I did three different trials and then I calculated the average so again this is a really nice clear layout but this is not perfect Okay, so let's say I made a mistake earlier. I said I should have said 0 0.3. Uh, if that was 0 0.3, this should actually be 10.0. So we start to look at the same precision that we have. Again, the same here. This is 20.3 and 20.4. This should then be 20.0. I also looking at the calculating this average here. This is to way too many decimal points. Okay, so again, with this, what I'm going to go and do is I'm going to probably reduce this and put it down to being 20.2 on this one. Okay, so having this instead as 20.2 because I want to keep my average with the same precision that I had here, so to one decimal place. Okay, the other thing that I've seen students do, and this is quite a nice thing um, as well, is sometimes they do separate tables for raw data and process data. Sometimes they have it in the same table. Um, I've seen students use color coding to tell me which is raw and which is um, processed. Um, I've also had them put headings, so they'll say raw data and processed data. It's up to you. Um, it's quite a nice thing to be showing there. Um, so just when you're doing your tables, things to consider, headings, really clear. Okay, um, with the symbol and your unit. You could be more precise as well. So it could be like the time taken for heating. Okay, this could be the temperature of um, water. I don't know. Okay, again, this is just example data. So you can, you could be a little bit more precise up there. Um, but the big one that I find that students usually forget is to consider uncertainties or they forget about precision. The big no-no that a lot of people do is they start putting their units in, let's say, their, um, their columns down here. That as well is not a good thing to do. You do not want to have this, so make sure your units are up in the top. Okay, so they're in your heading, not in your column. Okay, so that's one for tables. Again, you might have one, you might have many, depending on how difficult your experiment is or how much data you had to collect. The next one then is graphing. Um, your graph, I like to use a digital one, so I like to use Excel. Okay, I also use Logger Pro. I tend to use Logger Pro. Um, 
with kind of older students at the diploma level. Um, but if your school uses it or if you're offered to use it, I actually do prefer it. But for grade nine and 10, I think Excel is an okay graphing software. I usually use then a scatter chart. Um, I like using the scatter chart and I use either a um, this little kind of X or I use a circle for them. Okay, so little things on your graph, little things that you should be making sure you have. Okay, so again, rather than these weird squiggly lines, don't like those. Bar charts, unless you've been asked for a category, you shouldn't be using those. Okay, if you've got um, your X variable and your Y variable, in this case, that could have been time, that could have been temperature. So in this case, temperature would have been down here. And then the unit would have been in, um, sorry, not temperature, that would have been time down there with seconds. And then this one would have been temperature with degrees Celsius. So your um, independent variable versus your dependent variable. You also want to make sure you have a line of best fit in. Be really careful when you do your lines of best fit. Is it linear? Okay, are you getting a curve? You need to select the best fit. Okay, if you are getting linear, it's always good to also show your gradient at the top. So you can see here we have a negative gradient of minus 50.7. And I can see it crosses the y-intercept at 80 .6, sorry, 806. Sorry, I'm not wearing my glasses. So again, little things to watch out for when doing the table. I often see students plotting a nice table, sorry, t t plotting a nice graph, um, but they forget to put the labels on. Okay, so make sure your, your axes are labeled and please make sure as well that you've got a line of best fit in there. And if it's not linear, don't try and force a linear line on it. Okay, other little things where, for example, let's say you had an anomaly up here, you can sometimes circle the anomaly. You could use Google Drawing to do that, just to highlight it as an anomalous result. Um, that's a couple of things in there with your graph. You might be doing one graph, you might have a couple of graphs. Again, but just making sure it's really clear and your graph should always have a title as well. So the next part then is a conclusion. And the conclusion can sometimes be conclusion and analysis, again, depending if you have to calculate anything. Sometimes we have to calculate things from our graphs or I had to find out a specific value. Um, but generally, our conclusions are usually describing a relationship. So there's three things that you want to make sure that you're doing is have you answered your aim and your research question? Remember, this comes back to that third part on here. Does your prediction fit the data? Okay, so you're going to make sure you're going to go back to your prediction, your hypothesis with your research question up here. So normally I try and split this into three different paragraphs, okay, where I'll talk about in the first one, um, my aim or my research question, what was I trying to find out? So I outline the findings and the relationship. So in this case, the time and the temperature, um, as the time increased, the temperature decreased, something like that. Okay, you could start then putting in a little bit more language to things. You could start talking about how um, the trend was a linear trend. You could say that that linear relationship shows that it means that they are proportional. Okay, now if they're going negative, you could also talk about them um, decreasing as they go down. So it'd be um, in terms of the negative on there. You could also talk about if it goes through the origin. So if we have a graph, so a proportional is a nice straight line, okay? If we have a straight line going through the origin, we would say that it is directly proportional, okay? We could also say that if we have a nonlinear, if we have a curve, okay, it might be a polynomial fit, it could be an, an exponential fit. Um, again, we could put that in there. Although, again, at 9, 10, we don't normally have um, such difficult relationships to deal with. So again, describing in that relationship, is that what you expected to find out? Okay, so outline the relationship, okay, link back to your hypothesis. Okay, so I want to see your research question and I want to see you mentioning your hypothesis in that first bit there. With the second part, okay, once you've given those relationships, so for example, um, was speed proportional to the time, okay, you're going to then refer back to your data. Okay, so again in here, if we go back to um, the interpretation here, so we accurately explain it. Um, okay, so accurately interpreting data, you can see, sorry, it says you accurately interpret the data. So using that data to back your conclusion up. So normally here, we discuss the graph shape. 
Okay, the graph shape is usually a really big one that we have to do. We could sometimes, if it is a value that we're needing, we could refer back to the gradient, all right? So that's another one that we could be using there. Um, we could also use some example points to show, let's say, if it's increasing the same amount each time, you could use some of your values to show that. You could also refer to your line of best fit, okay? The idea that most of the points were on your line of best fit. That's another thing. So you could talk about how accurate it was. So was it a really good, clear trend? Okay, sometimes the trend isn't so easy to spot because we've got data all over the place, so it's less accurate, all right? We can also talk about it being precise, Right, so accuracy is getting the right shape. Precision, sorry, would be how close they are in terms of to our that line of best fits. That's another thing to discuss there. The other thing here as well is were there any anomalies? You want to mention your anomalies as well in your conclusion, but you want to explain them in your evaluation. Um, the last then bit is it comes in really important. It does say back here um, that you have to explain and evaluate them using correct scientific reasoning. Okay, so explain the results using correct scientific reasoning. Now, normally you've already done a bit of this in the um, introduction with your hypothesis, but you want to go over it again. Okay, and you want to basically give me a really nice consolidating little sentence or two at giving me the reason why that's the trend that you found. Okay, so again, using your scientific knowledge to give me an explanation of why as you increase something that the other one increased. Okay, so putting that in for your paragraph three. Some people like to do this as three separate ones. I've had some people combine the first two, they find that a bit easier, and then do the third one as a separate paragraph. Um, it is up to you, but that is my kind of tip for how I would lay this out. The last part then is to look at your evaluation. So we're going to be looking at evaluations here. Um, and in this case, we're going to be evaluating the method that you did. Now, this is not a reflection. Okay, so it's an evaluation, not a reflection. By reflection, I mean, I don't need to hear that you and your partner worked really well. Oops, that's evaluation. Um, so I don't need to hear that you and your partner worked really well, that you were super careful holding all the equipment, that you felt that you worked really quickly. Okay, and none of that do I need to hear. Okay, you do just need to be talking about the method that you did. So for example, what went well with your method? Did you use really precise equipment? Were you really careful when you were looking at taking your measurements? Were you making sure that you were down, for example, making sure to, um, to take care for parallax error? If you were dropping something, did you release it the same way each time? Okay, so things like what went met well. Okay, so mentioning your methods, it could have been the measurements, it could have been that you took lots of different trials. So for example, looking at ours, we did three different trials and took an average, that was really good. Okay, because that meant that I'm making my data more precise, I'm increasing the reliability of it. Um, you could also talk about things like the precision, so again, your equipment precision that you're using, um, validity, we've already just said, and the reliability, and also maybe your accuracy in some of your techniques. So that's also living me a little paragraph about your strengths. Another thing here could also be using your graph shape here, so we could see with this a really nice, clear trend, okay, which meant that my method was obviously very strong because I got the expected results. We have to, though, also consider weaknesses. So weaknesses could be, for example, like I said before, you were dropping it. Maybe you were dropping a ball, for example. But actually, maybe you didn't take so much care because you were trying to quickly go through the experiment. And so maybe you didn't release it exactly the same way each time. Maybe you weren't so careful with taking your readings. Maybe all the digital thermometers were being used. So you had to just use the glass thermometer, which is less precise. Okay, so you could put in all these different things for weaknesses. Again, thinking about how does it affect your accuracy? How does it affect your precision? Okay, you want to then explain why it's a weakness. Okay, so for example, again, try and use the word accurate or precision in there. Maybe you didn't do enough heights. So let's say you were dropping it from different heights and you didn't do maybe seven different heights. You only did five. Okay, that is making it um, less accurate because you've got the less range of readings. Okay, how would you improve it? Next time round, I'm going to make sure I do um, so many different heights in there. Okay, so each time, give me the weakness. Why is it a weakness and how to improve it? 
To make sure you're getting to the kind of level seven, eight here, I also want you to tell me how much of a weakness do you think this is? Do you think it has a little bit of effect on your data? Or do you think it actually had a really big effect on your data? So kind of with your weaknesses, you're almost evaluating your weaknesses as well. So you might say, well, I did do this, but actually it doesn't matter so much. So for example, I only did five trials, but I still got the expected trend. So it's not so much of a weakness. However, I really should do it next time. You could say things though about like, for example, you sometimes think that you might have forgotten to just drop it and that you might have thrown it a little bit. That would be quite a big weakness in your experiment. Okay, so again, thinking about your weaknesses, which are big, which are small, make sure you talk about them, okay? The why it's a weakness, link it back to precision and accuracy, and the how to improve it. Again, give me detail here. Don't just say, use a different piece of equipment. Okay, so for example, let's say here I used a glass thermometer and I could instead have used a better piece of equipment. Well, I might say that I'm going to use a digital temperature probe. Okay, the digital temperature probe is better because I can read to three decimal places on this. Okay, which gives me much more precise data. Okay, so again, I'm talking about how to improve it. I might even give the type of digital sensor I'm using. So a vernier temperature sensor, which I can then measure on my computer. All right. And um, this also means I can record the time, so the temperature continuously. I don't have to keep looking back every five seconds. So again, I'm giving detail and an explanation into how to improve this. OK, so that's something else to bear in mind that you could put in there. All right. So again, putting a lots of detail in for that section. Um, just to kind of go through in terms of structuring then. Um, oops, wrong one. Here we go. I normally then have my results, so underneath when I, my B, I started my C, I have my raw and process data tables or table. Again, if I'm doing this, I'll normally have things like table one, and I'll put my table in, let's say the same one I just had here, like so. I might just add that in, and I'll say uh, oops. A table of temperature um, and time. The other thing that I sometimes do is I also like to show things like my uh, sample calculations. So I'll just put in um, an example calculation. Ooh, let's say I can type. Um, I would put something like my um, average temperature okay would be my three trials divided by three so I would do like 2.0 plus two also 20.3 plus 20.4 all divided by three is equal to 20.2 um, degrees Celsius again I can use that I could actually do that if I was being if I wanted to be even more sort of nice with my presentation. I could even use the equation builder here, um, but it is nice if you have done some calculations just to show the person reading it your calculation. We then have the graphs. Again, nice, neat graphs. Your graph should be filling across, especially the whole width. Okay, so they're normally about half a page. Um, your conclusion, make sure you have put it into those little paragraphs, so those two or three paragraphs there. And then evaluations, I generally do a paragraph for strengths and weaknesses. I use the table just because it makes sure I've given the improvement um, for the weakness and I've explained why the weakness is in there. Um, as if we go back, you can see that the evaluation counts for two parts. So here you evaluate the validity of the method and you explain the improvements or extensions to the method.